the global stage. Up the global stage. Up the global stage. Hello, welcome to the global stage. It is always an honor to have you. Let's see the question of the month. And it is from Mike from the United Kingdom. He says, hello, my friend. There is a friend who wants to divorce the wife because she cheated on him. I tried to counsel him to reconsider his, his intention, but he says he stands justified because God tells us to divorce our spouse if they commit adultery. What do I do? Very interesting question. So I want us first of all to look at what the scripture says concerning divorce. And it is in Malachi chapter 2 and from verse 15 to 16. I read from the Good News Bible. Didn't God make one body and spirit with her? What was his purpose in this? It was that you should have children who are truly God's people. So make sure that none of you breaks his promise to his wife. And then in verse 16, he says, I hate divorce, says the Lord God of Israel. I hate it when one of you does such a cruel thing to his wife. Make sure you, that you do not break your promise to be faithful to your wife. So right there, we see God's intention when it comes to divorce. He says, I hate divorce. So now the question would be, if God hates divorce, then if this friend goes ahead, and asks for or divorces the wife, has she sinned or not? Now, this is what God says. If the man goes ahead and divorces his wife, he hasn't sinned, even though God says, I hate divorce. But where he is wrong is where he says he stands justified because God tells us to divorce our spouse when they cheat on us. God didn't say that. There is a difference between you should and you can. When it comes to divorce, according to God's word, even though he hates divorce and he doesn't want divorce, he gives certain conditions on which if it is committed, then there is the option for a divorce. And the first one is what the wife is being accused of here. And that is adultery. And you can find that scripture in Matthew chapter 5 verse 31. And then in Mark chapter 10 verse 1 to 12. When one commits adultery, then there is the option of divorce because once we enter into marriage, it is for life and God hates this divorce. But he gives certain conditions on which if it is committed, then the option of divorce comes in. He's not saying that you should divorce your spouse when they cheat on you, but you can divorce if you want to. And the first ground on which divorce is possible or it's an option, is adultery. And that's what I read to you in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Now, the second condition on which divorce becomes an option is when you are married to an unbeliever. And that you can find in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 15. There he says, if the unbelieving husband or wife is placed to dwell with you, then you stay in the marriage. But if he, if he or she is not placed to dwell with you, then you can go ahead and and divorce your spouse. And here again, what he says is that he's not telling us to go and marry somebody who's not a Christian or who's not a believer. What he's saying is that, assuming both of you were non-Christians or non-believers, and one of you got married or one of you got born again, he became a Christian. He says, whilst you're in that marriage, if that one who's not a Christian is pleased to do with you, who, who has not become a Christian, then... You should stay in that marriage. But if it's not pleased to join with you simply because you are not a Christian, then divorce is an option. Then you can go ahead and divorce. You have not sinned. Now, the third condition on which God grants divorce is the death of your spouse. And that you can also see in Matthew chapter 22, verse 23. There he says, if your spouse dies, then legally you can seek for divorce and then you can marry again. So, there are basically three grounds on which God allows for divorce when it is committed. That is adultery, number one. Number two is when you are married to an unbeliever and the unbeliever is not pleased to do with you or to live with you. The third one is the death of your spouse. Then divorce becomes an option. 
It's not saying that you should. It gives you the room for the option. That is, you can or not. Now, there is a fourth condition which you can also seek for divorce, even though it is not expressed in God's word. But I think and I believe that by the Spirit of God, it is considered. That is when there is the threat of death. That is when your spouse physically abuses you to the extent of death. But the Bible says that a man who doesn't take care of his family is worse than an, an infidel. And so if you are somebody who beats your wife, you abuse your wife physically or you abuse your husband physically to the extent of death, then the option for you is divorce. Do not stay in that particular mind because according to God's word, if you cannot take care of your family, then you are worse than somebody who is not a Christian. There, you can, by the wisdom of God, you can then go ahead and divorce your husband or your wife. Now, Mike, you ask, what should you do? What you can do right now is you can convince your friend to take the matter to the church leaders because there are steps to what we call conflict resolution. But where there's no room for reconciliation, then your friend can go ahead and seek for a divorce. He has not sinned. But he shouldn't say that he stands justified because God tells us to divorce. God doesn't say we should divorce our wives or our husband when they cheat on us. He said we can and there's a big difference between you should and you can. So take the matter to the church leaders and let them handle it. But if there's no room for reconciliation, then your, your friend can go ahead and divorce their wife because she has committed adultery. All right. Thank you very much for your question. I hope you were blessed with it. Kindly share this with somebody. See you some other time. God bless you. The global stage. Oh, the global stage. Oh, the global stage.